Hello my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people. We're in today's episode, a Karen calls police on OP because his car is too nice. Ridiculous, right? I hope you enjoy the other stories as well, and do remember to hit that subscribe button for future stories. We're diving in. So a few years back, I was at Disney World with some friends. Disney had just opened up Pandora, the world of Avatar. Needless to say, the line for the Flight of Passage was insanely long, and it looped throughout the park. So we get in line and wait about two and a half hours. So while we're standing there and chatting, this entitled Karen sneaks in with her husband and two kids, immediately in front of us. Her kids point out to her that this is not the beginning of the line, and she immediately shushes them. She tells the kids that it's okay to cut in line because they have a flight to catch. The husband doesn't say a word. Nobody looks at us. They just pretend nothing happened. Now, my friends were about to say something, but I immediately stop them. My friends look at me confused, to which I whisper, hey, just watch and learn. We stand in line for about 45 more minutes until we're right at the entrance. And that's when I decide to walk up to security and tell them that this lady cut us in line and she refused to go back to the end. I told him I didn't want to cause a ruckus, so I waited until I found him so he can talk to her. Sure enough, the guard walks up to her and says that she cut the line. She then freaks out on him and says that she didn't, and that she's been standing in line for a while. He then proceeds to ask her how long she's been waiting for, and she says over an hour. To which he replies, the wait for the ride is at least three hours long, so she must have cut in. She was puzzled and frustrated, but she realized she got caught, so she finally stops yelling and agrees to leave. As they escort her and her family out of the line, I look at her and say with a nice smile on my face, have a safe flight. I then look at my friends and tell them, and that's how it's done boys. We still laugh about it once in a while. Oh, those poor kids. Guys, it's always so sad to hear that kids have more sense than their entitled parents. And as for the dad, shame on you, sir, for getting roped into that. But I do kind of feel bad for him, though. He probably realized that it's much easier to stay quiet than to argue with the wife, right? Okay, so I've been scrolling through the sub for quite some time, wondering if any of the stories here are actually true. And then today it happened. So first of all, I drive a red 2005 BMW 3 Series. Nothing too fancy, but I really like my car and I'm kind of proud of it. I'm also 22 years old. I look a lot younger, which is relevant for the story. And I bought it with my own money. And why do I tell you that? Well, I'm flexing, of course. And it's the central point of the story that happened to me today. So this happened today at my local Burger King. I live in a small village and we don't have a Burger King, so I have to drive to the next town if I want to eat there. Today's afternoon, I felt like going there, so I hopped in the car and got onto the Autobahn. A couple of minutes later, I leave the Autobahn and enter the parking lot of said Burger King. I leave my car, walk into the store, and place my order. After a short while, I get my food and leave the shop. I take my car key out of my pocket, walk towards my car, and then press the unlock button. So while I'm opening the door and putting my bag behind the driver's seat, Karen enters the scene. So as I'm putting the seat back into normal position to get ready to leave, she suddenly shows up behind me. Out of nowhere, she says, That's not your car. Who did you steal that from? I say to her, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. How can I help you? Who did you steal it from? That can't be your car. Tell me or I'm calling the police. I tell her the car is mine, that I bought it myself with the money I earned at my job. She then says to me, you're lying. You're not old enough to have a job. Actually, I don't even think you're old enough to drive a car. How old are you? I tell her, ma'am, I do own this car and I'm 22 years old. I've had my license for more than four years now, so I'm very much allowed to drive a car. She then tells me, no you're not. You look like you're 16. I'm gonna call the cops on you. I tell her if she wants to, then do it. The police can come check and I'll show them proof that I do own the car and I have a license. She then says to me, nobody your age should have enough money for a car like this. My son works here and he can't even afford to buy a car. I say to her, listen lady, I'm not 16, I'm 22. I'm a trained IT specialist and I work about 40 hours per week. And I don't want to sound cocky, but I think I earn a little bit more money than someone who works at a fast food place. She then says to me, if you work 40 hours per week, then why are you here in the middle of the day? Now at this point, I'm getting angry. I tell her I have vacation, for Christ's sake, and I'm hungry, so I took my car to get some food. The woman's not listening. She keeps saying that this isn't my car, 
for me to stop lying and that she's calling the cops right now. The woman then takes out her phone and starts to call police. After she starts, I can see her son coming out of the store through the front door. He looks at me, standing in my open car door and his mom talking on the phone and says, Hey, excuse me, that's my mom right there. Is everything alright? Is she calling someone for you? Now I'm still angry and I say to him, Hey man, I'm not trying to be rude, but is it possible there's something wrong with your mom? She keeps accusing me of stealing my car and now she's calling police. The woman's son looks at me and says, I'm sorry, she can be a little difficult sometimes. He then looks at his mom and says, Hey, thanks for picking me up mom, let's go. To which his mom screams, No, we will wait for police to arrive here. He stole this car. The kid tells his mom very calmly, Mom, please relax. We gotta go home. I'm sure he owns this car and he wants to go home too. His mom then screams, No, we will wait until police get here to arrest this thief. The kid looks at me and says, I'm sorry. I tell him it's alright. It's not your fault. Let's just wait till police arrive so your mom can see that I actually own this car. So fast forward, a police car arrives in the parking lot and two policemen leave the car. They look around a little and walk towards the three of us. An officer says, hello, did any of you report a car theft? The Karen screams, yes, I did. This boy right here, arrest him, officer. The officer then asks, can someone tell me what's going on here? And the lady says, yes, he stole this car. The officer then says to her, why do you think he stole this car? The woman tells the officer that I'm too young to be driving a car and that I can't own a car like this. The officer then says to me, I'm sorry sir, but can you show me your license and car documents? I told him, wait a minute, I'll go get them. I then proceed to walk around the car to get my car documents out of the glove box. The woman grabs me shouting, officer, do something, he's clearly trying to run away. The officer tells her to let me go as I'm getting the documents he asked for. The woman lets go of me. I walk to the side of my car, open the glove box, and hand the documents over to him. I then take out my wallet and hand over my license too. The officer checks them and of course he says, everything's alright here. The woman keeps saying, no, the car is stolen. My son is older than him and he can't afford a car, so this car is stolen. The officer says, look, it's right here in the documents. This car belongs to OP. That name is also on his driver's license, so the car belongs to the young man. Karen then says, I don't care. The documents and license are fake. Just do your job and arrest him, officer. The woman's clearly not listening. She walks over to me, tries to take my car key, screaming that I don't own it. The officer then tells her, ma'am, please stop or we're going to have to arrest you. She says, you don't have to arrest me. I didn't steal this car. Why don't you do your goddamn job instead of being useless, officer? Arrest this boy. At this point, her son grabs her arm and says, Come on, mom. It's his car. He said it. The cop said it. Calm down. Let's go home. Please, mom. The kid is pulling his mom towards the car while she's shouting, I will get that car back to its owner. I swear to God I will. The two then proceed to enter their car and drive away. The officer hands over my license and car documents and says, Hey, do you want to press charges against her? I tell him, no, it's alright. I'm sorry you had to come out here to take care of this situation. He tells me it's okay. It's not even anywhere near the worst situation he's experienced this week. And to have a nice day. The cops get back in their car, enter it, and leave. I finally get into my car too and leave the parking lot to drive home. Now I'm sitting here, eating a cold chili cheeseburger and writing the story. Knowing that the woman's son works at the Burger King, I guess I'll never go there again. I don't want to spend half another afternoon arguing with her and waiting for cops. Yeah guys, that woman definitely sounds like she's got some screws loose. I do have a question though. Could OP have driven away at that point? I mean, he did absolutely nothing wrong. Legally, the car belonged to him and was registered to him. And he had a driver's license. So why the heck did he entertain this crazy lady by standing there waiting for the cops? Can someone please let me know? Like, do you actually have to wait around in situations like this if someone decides to call police on you? So this backstory is important. I met my best friend, who we'll call Janice, on the second day of band class in middle school. We were assigned rotating seats for the first week, to allow us to get to know all the other students in the class, and Janice and I were assigned the first two seats in the back row. This allowed us to get away with more tomfoolery than would normally be allowed. We immediately hit it off, and our friendship only strengthened by our mutual love for playing the trumpet. Let me preface this by saying that Janice was an incredible person. She was one of those people that even though she had a rough childhood, and she was often living day to day not knowing where her next meal was coming from, she never batted an eye, and she still put other people before herself. I put the pieces together one day when she came into class in dirty clothes, and you could tell that she hadn't bathed in a while. I told my mom about it, and she decides to open up our home to her whenever she wanted to come by. 
Even though we had no problem with her staying with us, she rarely ate meals because she felt shameful for having to rely on my family for those things. After a while, her mom was arrested for a reason that I to this day have not been made aware of, and she was placed into a foster program. I tried to convince my mother to adopt her into the family, but due to a recent divorce and a hit the economy took, my single mom couldn't sustain another person in the household. Eventually, a suitable foster parent was found for her, and everything seemed to be looking up. Oh, did I forget to mention that her foster family was completely loaded? And I mean loaded. You would never know by the way they acted or lived, but her foster mother developed a software company and sold it to a larger company for a ridiculous amount of money. So with that out of the way, it was now the end of 7th grade year. We were having our first major tryout to receive our placement in the advanced 8th grade band. We both realized our passion for playing the instrument as we practiced for hours on end nearly every day together, and both achieved top scores in the section, earning her the first chair position and me the second chair. We continued our rigorous practice routine through the summer, and Janice's foster parents paid for the two of us to have private lessons. With this training, we auditioned for the middle school version of All East, and once again, both got the first two chairs. At this point, both of our families began to invest in us by helping us purchase professional instruments for ourselves. My mother and I split the cost of a professional line Yamaha horn. By this point, I had saved up about $1,000 from previous birthdays and holidays, and the other $1,500 was split between my mother and grandparents as a gift. Janice did the same, but she saved up $1,500 over the past several years, and she had planned on using it for college, but I convinced her that investing it in herself could ultimately end up paying more in the end in scholarships. She eventually got on board and talked with her parents about the trumpet. They then reached out to me and told me that they wanted to surprise her with a much better trumpet than she was expecting. I let them know where to look, and with some clever work from my side and theirs, we gathered all the information we needed, and they put in the order. A few months later, I get a phone call from her, and at first, I was scared because she was sobbing directly into the phone, and I couldn't understand her. Eventually, she calmed down though, enough to tell me that her new trumpet had come in, but it wasn't the one she was expecting, that I needed to come over right now. Now, I thought I knew what I was going to see when I walked in, but to my utter surprise, it was nothing like I'd expected. When I gave her parents the details and specs of her ideal trumpet, I figured that they were going to find one that was similar in specs and get it for her. But they actually got her a complete custom trumpet to the exact spec that she wanted, but had it plated in a beautiful brush silver finish, with lapis inlaid in the valve finger buttons. It was beyond gorgeous and played like a dream. Now here's where all hell breaks loose and one of the most unfortunate series of events unfolds. A few years down the road, we're both auditioning for the high school version of All East, as freshmen. If we place in the top section in the top band, we get an invite to audition for All State, which is a huge honor to be a part of. I remember standing outside the door waiting for Janice to get out of her audition when I was approached by another trumpet player, standing in line, followed closely by his entitled parent. He then says to me, Hey, your friend has a very beautiful trumpet. Do you think she would let me play a few notes when she's finished? Now I already knew the answer, as she frequently got asked this at these types of events. So I say, I'm sorry, she doesn't let other people play it because it was a gift to her, and she doesn't want to risk it getting damaged. Now I saw the dismay in his eyes and in his parents, so I quickly remedied the situation and said, she would definitely let you have a good look at it though. We love talking to other people who are interested in different types of trumpets. This seemed to diffuse the situation and we met with him afterwards and had a quite pleasant experience because he was very knowledgeable on the subject and so were we. We got the results for the auditions a few days later and I was incredibly surprised as I got second chair and Janice got fourth. This was incredibly unusual as she was clearly the better player of the two of us but I thought nothing of it. We both qualified for all state auditions and that's all that mattered. A week passes and we're on our way to the all state auditions. My parents drove separate and I rode with Janice. She went to kindergarten late a year and had a late birthday, thus she had her license as a freshman. We arrive and meet the same kid and his parents in the parking lot. We have a slightly more awkward encounter, but again, I think nothing of it and just blame it on the nerves. We go into the auditions and both do wonderful. That night, we get a call, and they told us that she got first chair and I got third. Now that was an incredible moment, and that night, we stayed up on the phone planning our future as two people that would travel the globe and wow people with our wonderful trumpet playing. The next morning, we hurried to the practice hall to get an early warm-up. The rehearsal went astoundingly well, and Janice had one of the most beautiful solos that I'd ever heard. The next morning during practice, we had lunch break, and while Janice was getting out of her seat, she trips on a bottle of valve oil and landed trumpet first into the ground. I immediately rushed over to make sure she was okay, but she had hit her head on the side of the stand and put a serious dent in the bell of her trumpet. 
She then began to fall apart because she felt she had let her foster parents down by damaging the gift that they gave her. She sprung up after a few seconds and the shock began to settle. And she asked if I could hold onto the trumpet while she went to the bathroom to clean the cut that she got from the stand. A few hours passed and I hadn't heard anything from her. I continued to call her number, but nothing. I began to worry when I got a phone call from my parents. I could hear sirens in the background and my mom was crying. She told me to meet them out front, and they would pick me up and take me back to the hotel. Now I felt sick in my stomach and had an overwhelming feeling of dread. I continued to look for Janice while waiting on my parents. I wanted to let her know what was going on and talk to her about what happened, as she was clearly upset. As my parents pulled into the parking lot, I get into the car. They then drove to a spot near the back, and they turned the car off. I asked what was going on, and my mom explained to me that Janice was driving back to the hotel, and she ran a red light. She was then t-boned by a truck, and she was killed in the crash. Now I had no words, and I still have no words. I just sat there clutching the scratched and dented trumpet in my arms, with tears rolling down my face. My tears were not accompanied by anything, no emotion, just a feeling of void. I even lashed out at my parents, accusing them of a cruel joke, but it was true. My best friend, whom I considered my sister, was gone, just like that. No goodbye, nothing. That was it. So two weeks came and went, and the postponed Allstate concert was approaching. We had a ceremony at the first practice for her, but by this point, I had attempted to numb myself to avoid dealing with the loss, so I didn't participate. I brought her trumpet with me to practice one day because for some reason, it brought me comfort to have it near. It was set up on its stand next to me when I was once again approached by the entitled mom. She asked me what happened to the trumpet, to which I replied, oh, she tripped while she was carrying it and dinged it up pretty bad. The woman then asked me politely if her son could play with it now that it was damaged. I told her, no, she trusted me with it, so I have to keep it safe. The woman then says, oh, come on, it's just for one song. I tell her, I'm I'm sorry, but I can't do that. The woman starts yelling now and says, Are you serious? All my son wants to do is play with your stupid friend's beat up trumpet, and you won't even let him touch it? He got to hold it before, so why can't he play it now? Now I was taken aback by this whole scenario and just stood there with my mouth agape. But she continued, addressing the few kids left in the room and says, Can you believe this? This boy thinks he's so much better than my son that he won't even let him use his dead girlfriend's trumpet. At this point, I'm fuming. I start to retort, but I don't get far before I get too choked up to keep talking. The woman goes on and says, Why on earth do you need to keep it safe anyway? It's not like she's gonna need it anytime soon. The least you can do is make my son happy by letting him play the trumpet. He can play it way better than she could anyway. Now at this point, my emotional barriers that I put up to control my feelings were completely overwhelmed, and I began to sob. She then reached over me and attempted to grab the trumpet when the director walks into the room and saw what's going on. He hurried over to where we were, but the woman scurries out of the building before he could get to her. He immediately calls police. By this point, the emotional dam I built had busted, and all I could do to comfort me was to keep her trumpet in my lap as I wailed and sobbed. I had a full breakdown and I didn't stop for nearly an hour after my parents came and got me. The concert was cancelled, and the mom and child were never allowed to participate in all state performances again. And I received no confirmation of this, but I've been told that he was kicked out of his high school band program. We were encouraged to press charges against her, but I refused because I didn't want any more emotional weight at the time, and I figured it was some sort of moral high road. Looking back, I almost wished I pressed charges. Anyone who would have the audacity to do something like that, to a child, mind you, needs some serious help, and I think that would have been a good wake-up call. Now to end on a more positive note, I have continued to pursue our passion and perform music across the country. And since that day, I've performed every gig, concert, etc, etc on her trumpet, exactly how she left it. It still gives me comfort to have it near, as I feel a bit of her still with me when I have it. I hope you enjoyed this marvelous story from my childhood, and I do apologize for the length. But I felt that the full context of the story was needed. I also feel it's important to address that this happened a long time ago, and my memory might have lost a little on the details, but I tried to keep it to what was most solid in my memory. I appreciate the read, and hope every one of you is doing well. Guys, entitled people never cease to amaze me. Like, I'm baffled by the audacity of that woman to say something so outrageous to OP in a time like that. And on top of that, try to grab the trumpet out of OP's hands. But hey, are you guys surprised? Like, the amount of stories I read where people clearly give no crap about anybody else in the world is ridiculous. And listen, I don't want to end on a sad note, so here's a happier story for you guys.
Okay, so on this day, I was on an airplane, and right when we landed, a Karen in the back unbuckled and darts to the front of the plane to get off first. She didn't make any eye contact with anybody, and she felt that she was special. Like, I'm talking about going from the very last seat on the plane, down the whole row, past the first class, basically standing in the little kitchen thing in the front. All this time, the seatbelt sign was still on, and we were rolling down the runway. The flight crew had asked her to return to her seat until we reached the gate, but she wasn't even responding and she was ignoring them. Everyone was basically trying to just wait it out. It was a long flight, like 8 hours, and at this point we were exhausted anyway and nobody said a word. Suddenly, the captain announced that we had a special guest on board, and he'll be coming out to greet after we were settled at the gate. Now, the Karen stood there awkwardly until we did this whole rolling to the gate and whatever planes do when they land for about 15 to 20 minutes. Everybody sat there waiting to see what the captain was talking about. Eventually, the captain came out, and he asked the lady to please move back a little so he could get to a special guest. And then a little more, and then a little more, and then a little more. He was looking from row to row, trying to find a specific person. Everyone's watching and looking around to see who it could be. He kept going and going and asking the Karen to please step back a few more steps each time. Finally, as they approached the rear of the plane, he asked her to sit down for a second, while he grabs the intercom at the rear of the plane. He then says out loud, Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to announce our special guest, sitting in seat 42C. Let's give her a round of applause. And with that, the whole plane went wild with laughter and applause. I loved every moment of that. Absolutely brilliant, right? Guys, I once flew on a flight like that where a loud group of people ran to the front to get off first. And the funniest thing happened, we ended up deplaning from the rear doors, not the front. That was incredible. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. A drunk Karen attacks OP for not serving him. And it's such a crazy story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.